All right, y'all. Peace and blessings. God bless you all. I'm Jarvis Kingston, and I hope that y'all doing all right, staying strong and solid in these times that are in. I pray that you have repented and that you were baptized. I pray that you are safe, protected, and prayed up. And I just hope that whatever situation that you're going through, that the Lord is with you, that he guides you, he protects you, he looks out for you, he comforts you. I pray that your mental health gets better, and I just pray that you become more strong and wise in the Lord. I pray that you keep doing Father's business and Father's will for the rest of your life. You keep your eyes fixed on Jesus. You keep your eyes fixed on the prize. I just pray that you stay on a narrow path. You keep fighting a good fight of faith and that you help as much people as you can along your journey. You keep spreading the gospel, doing the great commission, doing the works and doing everything Jesus said to do. Amen. I pray that you stay obedient and faithful and steadfast. That you have strength, you're firm and you have stability. And I just pray that you get peace, comfort and encouragement through all the trials, tribulations that you face, through all the obstacles in your way, through any stumbling block or through um, your test and whatever the Lord is putting you through a test to you through. I pray that he purifies you, refines you, and he just keeps molding you and bettering you. I just pray that the Lord could take all the junk out of you and that you let him have his way with you and you do his will forever. You stay obedient. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us thank the Lord for another day. Let us thank the Lord for waking us up, giving us another chance. Let us thank the Lord for food in our belly, closing our back, a roof over our head. Let us thank the Lord for protecting us going in and coming out. And most definitely, let's just thank him for his word, his his love, his grace, his mercy, his only begotten son died for our sins, his promises, his covenants. Let's thank the Lord for that. Amen. Because uh, we serve an awesome, mighty God, most definitely. So let us always keep humbling ourselves, submit to him, uh, following his ways. Let us always hearken to his voice. Let us always, you know, stay in prayer and stay encouraging other people as well. OK, a lot of people out there need comfort and support. So always be willing to help somebody understand their situation. Yes, yes, y'all. Welcome, everybody. Uh, greetings, body of Christ. Shalom, family. I pray that you all are staying strong and hanging in there. And I appreciate all of you for listening and supporting. It means a lot to me. Um, constantly praying for you guys, loving you all. And let us uplift one another in Christ. Let us encourage each other for the Lord. Let us always stay strong through all this. We're scattered all four corners of the earth, but we are united in the Lord. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So always keep that in mind. Welcome, everyone. All peoples, all nations, all tribes, all languages, all tongues, all faces, all races, all four corners of the earth. Yes, yes, y'all. Whether you are an Israelite or a Gentile, it is all right. Whether you are chosen or adopted, it is all right. Let us gather. Let us praise the Lord and just thank him for everything that he's done for us and got us through and continues to keep doing for us. Amen. God protects the people. God looks out for his people. He definitely does keep his promise. Amen. Most definitely, y'all. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. All the animals, all the all the creatures in the sea, all the wild animals, all the beasts, all the animals in the air, all the birds, all the mountains, the plants, the trees, all his nature, all of his creation, everything that has breath, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. Let us love the Lord our God, for of our mind, heart, soul, strength, and might. Let us love our neighbors as we love ourselves. And let us keep doing Father's business and Father's will for the rest of our lives until his son comes back. He has come back like a thief in the night. He has come back in an hour nobody knows but the Father. So... Stay ready so you don't have to get ready. Amen. Most definitely, y'all. Yes, yes, y'all. So in today's message, we're going to continue our Bible reading series, okay? And we left off at First Peter reading last time, which was a great read. Now we are going to go into the book of Second Peter. All right, so we'll go through the book of Second Peter, and then we'll close out with a prayer. We'll close out with a priestly blessing. And we'll close out with giving all the praise, honor, and glory to the Most High God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise his only begotten son who died for our sins. Amen. Most definitely, y'all. So before I go into Second Peter chapter 1, I would love to read the commentary introduction before it. All right, so here we go. The author, the Apostle Peter. The audience, early Christians who had to deal with false teachers and evildoers within the church. Hmm. The date, about AD 67. The setting, shortly before his death, Peter writes to warn believers about false teachers. Hmm. The essentials of Second Peter. Imagine Peter smiling as he begins his second letter to believers. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ. Chapter 1, verse 1. Simon the rock, still serving and speaking for Jesus. Knows his time is short. He doesn't really deliver a new message. Rather, he reviews a well-worn theme one more time. In addition, he addresses false teachers within the church who are seeking to exploit the Christian faith for their own selfish financial gain. Mm. Still, act, still acutely aware that believers face life-threatening suffering, Peter urges them to stay on task. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless, and at peace with him. 
chapter 3, verse 14. As you read Second Peter, recognize that the apostles desire to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. Chapter 3, verse 1 still applies because devotional reflection ref leads devo devotional reflection leads to devoted living. Amen. What to look for in Second Peter? The graciousness of wise last words, a challenge to faithfulness through spiritual growth, glimpses of Jesus' majesty, reviewing history for lessons of faith, Peter's appreciation of the Apostle Paul. All right, so let us go to the book of Second Peter chapter 1. Here we go. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to those who, through the righteousness of our God and Savior Jesus Christ, have received a faith as precious as ours. Grace and peace be yours in abundance through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, making one's calling and election sure. His divine power has given us everything we need for life and godliness through our knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and goodness. Through these, he has given us very his very great and precious promises, so that through them you may participate in the divine nature and escape the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. For this very reason, make every effort to add to your faith goodness and to goodness knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance and to perseverance godliness and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love. For if you possess these qualities in increase in measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our our Lord Jesus Christ. But if anyone does not have them, he is nearsighted and blind and has forgotten that he has been cleansed from his past sins. Hmm. Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall and you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ prophecy of scripture so i will always remind you of these things even though you know them and are firmly established in the truth you now have i think it is right to refresh your memory as long as i live in the tent of this body because i know that i will soon put it aside as our lord jesus christ has made me has made clear to me and i will make every effort to see that after my departure you will always be able to remember these things we did not follow cleverly and invented invented stories when we told you about the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, for he received honor and glory from God the Father when the voice came to him from the majestic glory, saying, This is my son, whom I love, with him I am well pleased. We ourselves heard this voice that came from heaven when we were with him on the sacred mountain, and we have the word of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place, until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy has never, prophecy never had its origin in the will of man. But men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. Yes, yes, y'all. So that is the book of Second Peter chapter 1 reading. All right. Very good reading overall as we review it. Peter just goes more to detail, furthermore, about making one's calling and election sure and goes further to detail about with our faith that we add goodness and knowledge and self-control and perseverance and godliness and brotherly kindness to it. So that way um, we could be on point with the most high and and to keep us from being ineffective and unproductive. All right. in our knowledge of Jesus Christ. All right. So. Got to add all the other qualities plus our faith. Amen. Furthermore, we have to remember to not be nearsighted or blind. We can't forget what the Lord has brought us from, from our past sins. Okay, we can't forget that. Yeah, right. Never forget what God brought you out of. Furthermore, Peter goes into detail just saying that, Therefore, my brothers, be all the more eager to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never fall. And you will receive a rich welcome into the eternal kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. All right, all right. Furthermore, Peter goes into detail about prophecy of Scripture. And to sum it up, he basically goes on to saying how he said that, and we have the word of, pro of the prophets made more certain, and you will do well to pay attention to it as to a light shining in a dark place until the day dawns and the morning star rises in your hearts. Above all, you must understand that no prophecy of Scripture came about by the prophet's own interpretation. For prophecy never had its origin in the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along by the Holy Spirit. 
So that's how it's always been. Okay, it all goes back to God. Um, when you read Genesis, um, Joseph said that interpretation belongs to God. All right, so it's always God that breaks things down for His people, whether from to Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Joseph, you know, all the prophets, all the forefathers. Um, the Holy Spirit is what guided us, okay? It was never off of our own will, our own strength, or intellect. It's never like that because the physical carnal mind truly can't grasp the things of God. So that's why we have to be led by the Spirit, moved by the Spirit. Everything has to be Holy Spirit led, all right? Because too many people try to uh, do this by the flesh, and it doesn't work that way. Uh, prophecy is a very spiritual thing, so always be mindful of that. And furthermore, Peter just goes more into detail, you know, about keeping the love of Christ within you and to stay strong for him and to always make a good effort. And he always he, he also brought up the reminder of how, you know, uh, God's voice came and said, this is my son who I'm well pleased. All right. So um, that's a very powerful thing, because you notice when you read the New Testament, the New Covenant, um, that's like one of the only few encounters you, you really see of God, like actually speaking to someone um, within the new covenant. Everything else is just by the spirit. Because when you read the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, God was constantly interacting just one on one, like with Abraham or Moses or what have you, you know, further and further, Ezekiel and onward. In the New Testament, everything is like just set. It's just the Holy Spirit doing it. It's the Holy Spirit led. You know what I mean? And it's it's powerful nonetheless. God communicates how he wants to. He does as he pleases. His ways is higher than our ways. His thoughts is higher than our thoughts. So um, you just kind of notice how in the Old Testament, the Old Covenant, God had like close up personal encounters with his individuals and with Israel as a whole. But within the New Covenant, the New Testament, he just had that one personal encounter with his son. And then with everybody else, it was just all led by the spirit. So... Um, very interesting overall and very powerful. So it's important that we fear the Lord and always be uh, obedient and stay near to his presence. Amen. And keep doing his will. So that is Second Peter chapter one reading. Now let us go into the book of Second Peter chapter two reading. All right. The book of Second Peter chapter two. Here we go. All right, false teachers and their destruction, Second Peter chapter 2. But there were also false prophets among the people, just as there will be false teachers among you. They will secretly introduce destructive heresies, even denying the sovereign Lord who brought them, bringing swift destruction on themselves. Many will follow their shameful ways and will bring the way of truth into disrepute. Mm. In their greed, these teachers will exploit you with stories they have made up, Hmm. Their condemnation has been long, has long been hanging over them, and their destruction has not been sleeping. For if God did not spare angels when they sinned, but sent them to hell, putting them into gloomy dungeons to be held for judgment, if he did not spare the ancient world when he brought the flood on its ungodly people, but protected Noah, a preacher of righteousness, and seven others, if he condemned the cities of Sodom and Gomorrah by burning them to ashes and made them an example of what was going to happen to the ungodly, and if he rescued Lot, a righteous man who was distressed by filthy lives, by the filthy lives of lawless men, for that righteous man living among them day after day was tormented in his righteous soul by the lawless deeds he saw and heard. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment. While continuing their punishment, this is especially true of those who follow the corrupt desire of the sinful nature and despite authority. Bold and arrogant, these men are not afraid to slander celestial beings. Hmm. Yet even angels, although they are stronger and more powerful, do not bring slanderous accusations against such beings in the presence of the Lord. But these men blaspheme in matters they do not understand. They are like brute beasts, creatures of indistinct, born only to be caught and destroyed, and like beasts they too will perish. Hmm. They will be paid back with harm for the harm they have done. Their idea of pleasure is to carouse in broad daylight. They are blots and blemishes reveling in their pleasures while they feast with you. <sighs> with eyes full of adultery, they never stop sinning. They seduce the unstable. They are experts in greed and a cursed, a cursed brood. They have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Balaam, mm, Balaam, Balaam, son of Beor. Who loved the wages of wickedness, but he was rebuked for his wrongdoing by a donkey. 
a beast without speech who spoke with a man's voice and restrained the prophet's madness. These men are springs without water and mist driven by a storm. Blackest darkness is reserved re- reserved for them. For they mouth empty, boastful words, and by appealing to the lustful desires of sinful human nature, they entice people who are just escaping from those who live in error. Man, they promised from they promised them freedom while they themselves are slaves of depravity, depravity, for a man is a slave to whatever has mastered him. If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and are gained entangled in it and overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. It would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then turn from turn their backs on the sacred command that was passed on to them. Mm. Of them, the proverbs are true. A dog returns to a dog returns to its vomit, and a soul that is washed goes back to her wallowing in the mud. Sheesh! Peter was not playing with y'all. <laughs> that's the book of Second Peter, chapter two, reading. Man, 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 boy, that's a lot right there. Peter went in about. You know, I love how bold and firm these men were about the word, man. The double-edged sword. Yeah, that thing is serious, okay. And as we review the book of Second Peter chapter two, I would just like to read this in commentary scripture within it. Second um, Peter chapter two, verse nine: God can rescue us from trials. If this is so, then the Lord knows how to rescue godly men from trials and to hold the unrighteous for the day of judgment. Hmm. Yes, yes, y'all. So that's a good in commentary scripture. As we review the book of Second Peter chapter two. Peter just goes more further to detail about false teachers and their destruction. All right, because you got to remember, even in ancient times, there was always false prophets, false prophecies, uh, false miracles, false apostles, false disciples. There is false everything. In spiritual warfare, there are trick plays. There is deception. There is lies. You have to remember, the devil, he's the father of lies. So he has to send out false ones, uh, false agents, all these different things. And um, they try to disguise themselves in the name of the Lord and they're not of the Lord. The Lord didn't send them. The Lord don't know them. The Lord ain't use them. OK, so uh, Peter's just going into detail about false teachers and their destruction. Um, and he, he just really went in. He talked about how greedy they are, how they exploit people, how they make things up. Mm, it just I mean, just on how blasphemous they are. And as I was reading Second Peter's chapter two. What just caught, what kept popping to my mind was just all these false pastors we see today, like all these false pastors, these false speakers, um, the, these, the, the, they're just false, man. It's just like so evident and clear as day. It's like, man, these people ain't got no shame. They don't even care. Like, it's just crazy. And their destruction going to hit them hard, man. You know, you false prophesizing, you doing false miracles, you pre- you preaching a false gospel, you talking about a fake counterfeit false messiah when you doing that man you these people man they crazy for doing that stuff man you know what i'm saying and they gonna get their judgment man they gonna get their destruction most definitely got us to not be mocked uh you will reap what you sow you can't go around spreading a false gospel spreading lies misdirection exploiting people being greedy manipulating people using up people for your own financial gain and we just see that way too much today. And a lot of these churches, a lot of these ministries, these mega pastors, these mega speakers, um, the Lord is going to judge them and give them their destruction. Most definitely. And, and, and Peter went into detail, called them even adulterers. So he, he, he really went in on them, how shameful they are, how they, how they lie, don't speak the truth, how they're greedy. I mean, he, he just really went in. You know, furthermore, Peter went into detail about bringing up the destruction of the flood with, with Noah and Sodom and Gomorrah with Lot. He was he, he brought that up to show how um, that's the type of judgment and hell they're going to get. That's the type of destruction they're going to get. You know, there was some very intense things to bring up when you're bringing up Sodom and Gomorrah and the flood throughout Noah. And what Peter was also getting through this was also how God would still save his people through all of this. He saved Noah through that flood he's, and his peoples and the animals. He saved Lot through the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, you know, because these men like Noah and Lot, they were persecuted in the midst of that as well. They were uh, ridiculed and mocked and went through a lot and endured so much in them evil times. And as us as believers, um, we're going to go through the same thing that Noah dealt with, Lot dealt with, of course, Christ, Jeremiah, the disciples. We, we're all going to uh, deal with it. Um, nobody's excused from it. 
All right. So in these times that we're in, we have to be strong and endure through it. And, and that's why you don't walk around in fear. You don't worry and stuff because you trust in God. You know, no matter what's going to happen, the Lord got me and I'm in his presence. I'm in my right mind for him. I'm trusting in the Lord through it all. So that's why you don't worry. You don't walk around in worry or fear and, you know, what's going to happen, how it's going to play out. You don't worry about that. Um, you just trust in the Lord. You take it one day at a time and you, your faith and confidence is so on point that nothing can rattle you or shake you. Because you already been through a lot in your lifetime anyway, so why walk around in fear now? You dig what I'm saying? So um, God brought you through the things you went through in your life. What makes you think he won't bring you through <laughs> any destruction or judgment he about to pour on the earth or a certain place or a people? Or what makes you think he won't spare you from that, right? So God can spare you from health conditions or cancer or disease. He spared you from COVID. He spared you from a car accident. He spared you from uh, harmful toxic environments or situations of domestic violence, the, the Lord brought you out of a lot of stuff. So he will definitely get us through um, any any wrath or anger he pours out upon the earth or judgment or destruction, he's going to save us through it. So it's nothing to worry about, okay? Um, furthermore, Peter just goes more to detail about how they're experts in greed and how they seduce the unstable and they never stop sinning. He says their eyes are full of adultery. <laughs> Man, he even compared them to Balaam, 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 and Beor, the son of Beor. Um, he said they love the wages of wickedness. Wow, wow, wow. Peter was not playing with these false pastors and these false prophets. You got to remember, like, when you read the Old Testament, you read the Law, Statutes, and Commandments, like, um, it was actually a commandment to kill a false prophet. It actually was. That, that's how serious that stuff is. Like, uh, remember, with the commandments, we were called to kill witches and warlocks, who suffer a witch not to live. And we were also called to, um, you know, slay false prophets, people who give false dreams, false prophecies, all this different stuff. We were called to actually weed them out in the name of the Lord. So that's how serious it is. Even Elijah, he even uh, burnt up them false prophets and those who was worshiping Baal. We, we, you know, he was, he was slaying them. He wasn't playing. All right, so... That's how urgent it is. Obviously, the way we're in, we are now, you know, Jesus calls to be gentle as doves and wise as serpents. So, you know, we, we just got to uh, be peaceful and calm about everything and know that the Lord going to get them and that vengeance belongs to the Lord. But in them ancient times, they were taking matters to their own hands and even God commanded them to do it personally, too. So that's how serious it is when you spread a false gospel, a false truth. You preach about a false Christ and all these different things because. We all know they're preaching a false Jesus. They fall, they're preaching a false gospel. They're preaching uh, just everything about them false. False prophesizing, false speaking of tongues, false praise and worship, uh, false miracles. Just, just it's like, man, the trickery and deception is, is heavy out here. It, it's heavy. And it's even more sad that more people are under that deception and that great delusion. It's even more sad how people are following after it. This is why we have to uh, get, get people out of that deception, man. We got to bring them to the truth of God, the truth of the gospel, the truth of, of salvation and the real walk with the Lord and the right example of it. Because right? a lot of people are being misled, the blind bleeding the blind, the wicked are just keep deceiving and giving up misinformation and disinformation and causing all this confusion and confusion. And the Lord is not the author of confusion. All right. The, the Lord, he made it very simple for us with his word, his covenant. He made it very simple. Uh, when people try to complicate the word of God or complicate the truth, that that just that's an evil person. All right. So people, you got to have discernment out there. OK, you got to have discernment. All right. Now, if you're going to a, a true church, true doctrine, true gospel, um, blesses to you and more power to you. But um, if you see some red flags or something that will sit right in your spirit about a certain church or ministry, uh, be alarmed, alert, and sober about it. If you're listening to a certain speaker, somebody with a platform, and the things they're going about is not biblical or not sound doctrine of the gospel or dealing with the covenants or what the word actually says, what the Lord said, then uh, that person should be rebuked and called out. You know what I'm saying? And um, got to gotta have discernment, people. Got to have discernment. Ask the Lord for more discernment to recognize the truth from the fake. Ask the Lord for uh, to be more sharp, more keen, all right? and be able to be more alert and sober about what you're listening to, how you're listening to, who's speaking. Like you have to have discernment on that. Most of these people that you see with these big platforms and voices, they are not sent by the Most High. They are not of the Lord. They are not. <laughs> okay, so always be alert. Okay, and yeah, man, uh, Peter he really went in on these 
on these false teachers, man. He 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 went in on them, and they and they gonna get theirs, okay? They gonna get theirs, all right? So, yes, yes. So, well, I love to do before I go into Second Peter chapter three. I would love to read the commentary before it. All right. So let us go to the commentary. Okay, okay. The title of this commentary is Continuing Paul. God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5, verse 8. Continuing. The scribe jerked back to consciousness, dropping the pen that had gone loose in his hands. How long had he been dozing? He brushed the parchment with his hand before rubbing his eyes. Thanks be to God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the speaker continued. The tone was different now from before the scribe had dozed off. He glanced back over what he'd written so shortly before. What a wrenched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? He must have missed some transition. The scribe remembered the long silence right before he dozed off. Recalled the speaker's hunched shoulders lifting and falling heavily just across the room from where the scribe sat on the floor. Read it back to me, the speaker instructed. Afraid of having his ne- negligence discovered, the scribe asked meekly, how much just the last paragraph? Cautiously, the scribe began reciting the last few sentences that were on his page. Before thanks be to God, he hesitated, not knowing if this was going to be the last letter he would write in Corinth. He finished the last line and kept his head down, eyes firmly set on the paper, ready for the rebuke. Continuing, his speaker started quickly again. So then I myself in my mind, the scribe glanced up only to see the familiar sight of his speaker limping slightly, slightly as now on his feet. He paced the floor, his hand gestures following the pace of his voice. The words were coming quickly now as the scribe struggled to keep up. Please slow down a minute, sir. I've got an so he condemned his sin and sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law. Are you with me? Might be fully met in us. The pace continued for the next few minutes as each sentence moved from the speaker's mouth to the scribe's pen. The speaker's gestures came, became more dramatic until it looked as though he were directing a host of imagined choirs. In the middle of the outpouring, the scribe abruptly heard, What then shall we say in response to this? Followed by silence. The pause was shorter, than this, the, the pause was shorter this time, broken with another question. If God is for us, who can be against us? The speaker didn't gesture through his last few sentences, but sat still again, his his shoulders heaving as they had earlier. All right, back to the future. What does Paul say about himself in Romans 7 and 8? What does Paul say about the nature of God in these chapters? What effect might this have on your life? The The story continues. Read more about this incredible man of God in the book of Acts chapter 7, verses 58, all the way through, uh, Acts 28, verse 3. Also, to get a glimpse into his heart, read his New Testament letters. All right, so that commentary was just basically discussing the back in the blast in the past moment with Paul writing the word down and writing in pens and writing those letters and through the scriptures given to us within the New Testament. Okay, so it was just giving a more like a personal in depth background of how that played out, how he was writing it, and the condition he was in as he was writing those letters. Because when you read the New Testament, like Romans, the book of Corinthians, the Timothy, all those things, those are all letters. So it just gave us a glimpse of insight on that, okay? In a more situation like Phil. So now that was Second Peter chapter 2 and commentary reading. Now let us go to the book of Second Peter chapter 3, all right? The book of Second Peter chapter 3, here we go. The day of the Lord. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. First of all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, Hmm. scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised ever since our fathers died, everything goes on as it is as it has since the beginning of creation but they deliberately de- deliberately deliberate excuse me y'all deliberately forget that long ago by god's word the heavens existed and the earth was formed out of water and by water by these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed by the same word the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of ungodly men 
But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. Hmm. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. He is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything in it will be laid bare. Since everything will be destroyed in this way, what kind of people ought you be? You ought, ought you to be. You ought to live holy and godly lives as you look forward to the day of God and speed and speed its coming. That day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. But in keeping with his promise, we are looking forward to a new heaven and a new earth, the home of righteousness. So then, dear friends, since you are looking forward to this, make every effort to be found spotless, blameless and at peace with him. Bear in mind that our Lord's patience means salvation, just as our dear brother Paul also wrote you with the wisdom that God gave him. He writes the same way in all his letters, speaking in them of these matters. His letters contain some things that are hard to understand, which, which ignorant and unstable people distort, as they do the other scriptures to their own destruction. Therefore, dear friends, since you already know this, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of lawless men and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, to him be the glory, and b b to him be glory both now and forever. Amen. All right, so that's the book of Second Peter chapter 3 reading, okay? So Peter just goes more into detail about the day of the Lord and how it will be. He was saying in the last days, um, there will be scoffers. There will be people like, y'all said he was coming back since then and then. And y'all been saying that for years now. And people doing it right now. People are like, oh, y'all said that in the 70s. Oh, y'all said that this, this, and that. Y'all try to predict his death, this, this, and that. So you have people that are still like, you know, just scoffing and just push, brushing it off like there's nothing to poo poo in it. And they, they don't understand, man. Like, <laughs> he is coming back. He going to burn this whole thing up, man. This whole thing going to be burnt up with wrath and anger and fire. And furthermore, Peter describes how there'll be a new heaven and a new earth. And we all know that goes further in, you know, the book of Revelations or what have you. But also uh, Isaiah prophesied about that. Isaiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, all the prophets, they all said the tabernacle of David, the everlasting foundation, the everlasting people, eternal people, um, a kingdom that, can, that cannot be destroyed. Um, you know, Daniel had dreams about that. Um, Isaiah said the restoration of Israel, the gathering of one place, one mountain for God, uh, mountain of God for all people, things and so forth and so forth. So it's all prophetic and every prophet was able to detail it in a different way through a vision or dream. Um, the wording may be a bit different, but it's all like the same outcome. You know, we prevail, we come out on top, we, we and that's that. And um, and then within the New Testament, of course, Paul wanted to detail about how it's going to be when Christ comes back, how the Lord comes back for his people, um, having immortal bodies and things of that nature. Um, and Jesus did obviously talk about it as well. So Jesus, Paul, uh, Peter, they all were more detailed and vivid about how it's going to be with the day of the Lord. And then when you read the book of Joel, um, you know, Joel said that the day of the Lord is like darkness and um, who can withstand it? Who can withstand the day of the Lord? Who can endure it? You know what I mean? That's a very uh, powerful, like effective like thing, man. You know, God's wrath and anger being poured out. Ain't nobody could bear with that trust. Trust me, you, you thought until you thought Sodom and Gomorrah was bad. You thought days of Noah was bad. This one's going to be a hey, you know what I'm saying. So and then furthermore, as you read Second Peter chapter three, you know, Peter goes into detail about how the Lord is not slack in his promise. He's not slack or slow to it. It's just he wants us to repent. He doesn't want nobody to perish. He says not one. He's patient with us. He's not wanting anybody to perish. He wants everybody to come to repentance. But people are still lawless and doing them and don't care. So, you know, Peter says, hey, the day of the Lord it will come like a thief, you know. And Jesus says, come like a thief in the night. It's like, hey, man, people will be caught slipping. Nobody's going to know it. Nobody. You could be in the middle of doing something, then boom, happen just like that, twinkling of an eye. Amen. So that's why this time we're given now, it's time to repent, come back to him, live for him, get baptized, set free, delivered, getting that word, start living by it, doing his will storing up treasures in heaven and passing on to others because um, time is speeding up in these times that we're in and it, things are really speeding up. All right. So yeah, man, 
gotta gotta fear the Lord, people. Gotta fear Him. All right. So, so you stay on that narrow path for the Lord. Amen. Let us stay spotless. Let us stay blameless and be at peace with Him. All right. So there you have it. That is the book of Second Peter, chapter three, reading. All right. Just three chapters within Second Peter letter, but very is es- very excellent reading nonetheless. Amen. So let us stay strong and stay prepared for the day of the Lord and stay ready and. All right, keep finding a good fight, amen. So there you have it, all right. What I would love to do as I close out is give all the praise, honor, and glory to the most high God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And praise is only begotten son who died for our sins, amen. Most definitely, y'all. So here we go. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, y'all. He is the hope for humanity, most definitely, y'all. He is the Adam, the second Adam, the last Adam, the advocate, the almighty, true, and living God, the Alpha and Omega, amen. Amen. The apostle of our profession, the arm of the Lord, the atonement sacrifice for our sins, the author and finisher of our faith, the author and perfecter of our faith, the author of life, the author of salvation, the beginning and the end, the beginning of creation of God, the beloved son, the blessing only potent, the blessing only ruler, the branch, the bread of God, the bread of life, the bridegroom, the capstone, the captain of salvation, the chief cornerstone, the chief shepherd, Christ, the Christ of God, the consolation of Israel, the cornerstone, the counselor, Wonderful Counselor, the Creator, the Dayspring, the Deliverer, the Desire of the Nations, the Door, the Elect of God, Emmanuel, the Eternal Life, the Everlasting Father, the Faith and True Witness, Faithful and True, the Faithful Witness, the First and the Last, the First Begotten, the Firstborn from the Dead, the Firstborn over all creation, the Forerunner, the Gate, the Glory of the Lord, God, the Good Shepherd, the Great High Priest, the Great Shepherd, the Head of the Church, the heir of all things, the high priest, holy and true, the holy one, the hope, the hope of glory, the horn of salvation, the I am, the I am that I am, the image of God, Jehovah, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Shalom, Jesus of Nazareth, Jesus, the judge of Israel, the judge. He is a king eternal. Amen. He is a king of Israel. Hallelujah. He's a king of kings. Most definitely. He's a king of kings, the Lord of lords. Hosanna, Hosanna, king of saints, king of the ages. King of the Jews, the King, the Lamb, the Lamb of God, the Lamb without blemish, the last Adam, the lawgiver, the leader, and commander, the life, the life of the world, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the living one, the living stone, the Lord, our righteousness, the Lord is my portion, the Lord is my strength, the Lord is my refuge, the Lord is my rock, the Lord is my deliverer, the Lord is my, my, my high tower, the Lord is my shelter, my safety, the Lord, my dwelling place, the Lord is our, the Lord, our God is one, there's no other like the Lord, amen. The Lord is our everything. He is our salvation, our redeemer, our branch, our healer, our deliverer, just everything and above. Amen. He is the name above all names. He is a sustainer. He is a sufficient one. Most definitely. Yah, Yahweh, Yahuwah, Yahweh, Shai, Yahweh, Ben Yahweh, Yahai, Yahshai, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Barakatha, Shalom, Shalom, Yeshua, Elohim, Yehosha, Yehusha, Yeshua, Ahai, Yeshai, the consuming fire. The father of lights, the father of the fatherless, the father of widows, the father of mercies. Most definitely the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of heaven and earth, the God of Israel, the God of the Hebrews. Most definitely his son sits at the right hand of him. The government rests on his shoulders. He is the carpenter who fix all things. He is the great physician who can heal all things. Amen. Most definitely with the Lord, all things are possible to those who believe. Most definitely, y'all. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Amen. Nothing's too hard for him. He made all this in six days and rest on the seventh day. He could fix your situation right now. Amen. Most definitely. He is the Lord of all, the Lord of glory, the Lord of lords, the man from heaven, the man of sorrows, the mediator of the new covenant, the mediator, the messenger of the covenant, the Messiah, the mighty God, the mighty one, the morning star, the Nazarene, the offspring of David, the only begotten son of God, our great God and savior, our holiness, our spiritual husband, our Passover, our protection, our redemption, our righteousness, our sacrificed Passover lamb, the power of God, the precious cornerstone, the prince of kings, the prince of life, the prince of peace, the prophet, the redeemer, the resurrection of life, the resurrection, the resurrector, the life, the revelation, the revelator, the righteous branch, the righteous one, the radiant one, the perfect example, the rock, the root of David, the rose of Sharon, the ruler of God's creation, the ruler of the kings of the earth, the savior, the seed of woman, the shepherd and bishop of souls, the Shiloh, the son of Abraham, the son of David, the son of God, the son of man, son of the blessed, son of the most high God, the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, the son of righteousness, the just one, the one mediator, 
the stone the builders rejected, the true bread, the true God, the true light, the true vine. Yes, he is the truth. Amen. He is the way. Hallelujah. He is the way, truth, and life, the wisdom of God, the witness, the wonderful counselor, the word, the word of God, the word of life, the word of Yahuwah, the word of Elohim, the word of Yeshua HaMashiach, the word of Yahweh Shai, the word of Yehosha, Yehusha, Yeshua. He is the word of the consuming fire. Most definitely. His word is a double-edged sword. It cuts deep. His word is like fine silver, just as David said in Psalms. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. Most definitely. He is the word. We touch and agree. Yes, yes, we serve also awesome creator. This son is amazing for dying for our sins, y'all. Boast in the Lord, boast in the Lord, boast in the Lord. Remember what he brought you through and what he continues to keep doing for you. Think about everything that you you endured through his strength, through his glory, through his presence, through his hand on you. Amen. His father, the father and the son are so amazing. Most definitely boast in the Lord. His son is awesome. He died for our sins. His blood cleaned up our mess. He is the seed of Abraham promise, the seed of Adam humanity, the seed of David kingship, the seed of God deity. The seed of Jacob nationality, the seed of Judah tribe, the seed of Shem race, the seed of woman prophecy. Amen. We touch and agree in the authority and the power in the name of Jesus Christ. You are healed, renewed, restored, redeemed, forgiven, embraced, love. New mind, new heart, new soul, new hands to prosper, new footsteps, new journey, new paths, new journey, new life, new seasons, new heart, heart of flesh, warm heart, forgiveness, stability, firm, just, goodness, love, stability, firm, prosperity, gladness, joy, merry heart. Speak those things over your life. Rest restoration, healing, deliverance, baptism, repentance. I speak those things over your life. Yes, yes, y'all, most definitely by the blood of Jesus. Amen. Healed by his stripes. Amen. Healed by his stripes. Yes, yes, y'all. So there you have it. All right. That's the word for today. All right. The book of Second Peter reading chapters one through three. Very excellent brief reading. And let us apply the word to our lives and be doers of the word, all right? Let us stay spotless. Let us stay blameless. Let us stay whole and at peace with the Lord. Let us be complete and mature in him, amen? Most definitely. So let's stay strong through these times that are in, all right? I pray to God that whoever listens to this message, I pray that you repent, get baptized, start your life up for the most high. You become a new creature in Christ. You be born again, delivered, delivered, set free, just everything new in your life. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. That's what the Lord says, all right? The former things have passed away. New everything, new, new, new. New habits, new routines, new attitude, new mindset, new life, new everything in Christ. Amen. Yes, yes, y'all. So before I close out, I would love it and y'all close out with this priestly blessing. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Shalom. I'm Jarvis Kingston. I got much love for you all. Praying for you all. Love you all. Peace.